Hey everyone, when it comes to Amazon advertising, we're all familiar with the very usual suspects. Wood would be like the sponsored products and sponsored brands, but I think the third ignored uh, brother would probably be sponsored display. On Amazon advertising now, they really upped the game with in terms of what you could do with a sponsored display. If you, I actually create like a chart kind of like a hierarchy chart of what you could actually, uh, the type of campaigns and all the types that you could actually target for on your uh, sponsored display campaign. And in this video, I will talk about uh, how you could uh, set all this up in the most optimal structure for you to test these each of these campaigns out. So as you can see in this chart, under the umbrella of sponsored display, there are two main targeting types. That is audience targeting types, right? product targeting type. So for product targeting type, I think we are all very familiar with. Uh, for example, you know, you just add a plug in a certain ASIN in there and then you target or a particular category in there, right? And target. So as you can see under the product targeting umbrella, there is the category targeting and the individual products targeting. And then uh, this is relatively new, the audience targeting. So audience targeting is very similar to like how you would uh, target, uh, do your ads on Facebook. There is uh, three types of audience targeting. There is the remarketing. So this is something that we are really familiar with in the DTC world. Basically, uh, people that have visited your listing or your product that have not made the purchase, you remarketing them again, which is really good. If you are selling a product that is a high AOV and you require multiple touch points for you, right to make a sale another a good example for you to use remarketing campaign is probably like a product where user would have to constantly refill repurchase so the average uh, ltv right lifetime value is relatively high so this is a very good remarketing uh, kind of like a targeting settings to use if you're selling that type of product there is the amazon audience right so that would be under uh if you create a new uh, sponsor display campaign you select audience This is all the different like uh, Amazon type audience that you could target. So what is uh, Amazon uh, audience about? So basically it's uh, to drive awareness for their exclusive segments, right? Across their different uh, Amazon assets. Uh, so let's, let, let's look at it a bit more details of what it is for this particular targeting type. Let's see a little more audience, right? Choose which shopper's audience you want your sponsored display ads. Your your ads will serve both on and off Amazon. That includes the Amazon homepage, detail shopping, uh, result page, third-party websites such as uh, their apps, and also Twitch. Um, I also want to mention IMDb in there as well. Um, so how they uh, decide on audience? Probably based on their, their behaviors. Uh, Amazon is uh, obviously always tracking your shopping behaviors. So I think that's how they really come up with these uh, affinity um, audience types right here. Um, so if you, if you feel your product, uh, really matches well with these, uh, specific audience types, especially, you know, for example, here, you're selling planting type of equipment, right? It, it definitely a worthwhile to kind of use this type of, uh, audience. The, as I mentioned, there's a the remarketing. Uh, so obviously remarketing would be people that uh, looked at your listing, but haven't actually made the purchase. And then lastly, there's the purchase audience purchase audience. is basically people. So there's two types of this. So that would be people that actually purchase your product, your advertised product. Uh, for some reason, you want to advertise them again. Uh, I, there's really, for me, there's really no point for that because they're already purchased your product. Second is that uh, people that have purchased similar product as yours. Uh, so that is worthwhile for you to potentially uh, retarget, retarget them as well. Right. So if you could uh, see it's right here, product targeting audience and then that would be under purchase remarketing and uh so you can see like the type of segments that have purchased uh, in a specific segment like categories or just generally related to your product right that's what you want to target and in terms of campaign structuring uh, what you want to do is uh, you want to uh, structure your sponsor display campaign in uh an audience campaign right sponsored to say audience campaign that is like audience specific and then your product uh targeting campaign right which is product target specific where you uh bunch categories and individual products together under an ad group so this is a structure that i would normally go with for you to scale and on top of 
uh, these different types of uh, uh, targeting. There is also different types of bidding as well, right? In sponsor display, there is three different types of biddings that you could select, which is uh, one for optimal uh, reach, optimal for page visits, and optimal for conversions. Those are very also very good to test as well. So in my opinion, in my testings, uh, it seems like the optimal reach uh, could be very profitable for you if you have a product that has a high order value, right? Uh, in this case, I'm selling a product that's over 100 and $160. So, I mean, I think that's a good candidate for me to get uh, to use optimal for reach. So this is basically what I would uh, do in, in this scenario. I would, uh, if I were uh, setting this up from scratch, and if I really want to scale out sponsored display campaign, in this case, I would create ad groups, right, for each of these that would test each and one of these different uh, bidding types. So let's uh, let's begin with uh, creating campaigns for uh, sponsored uh, product targeting, right? Uh, I think for this particular video, I'm just gonna talk about uh, sponsored uh, display product targeting. In the next video, I'll talk about how I would structure a sponsor audience. Okay, let's begin. Um, so I do have an existing, okay, let's just uh, begin with, uh, let's just, Create a campaign. Display. So normally I would begin by uh, naming my campaign. Um, this is how I uh, like to name it. Um, so SD audience. Because um, obviously I'm gonna, not audience, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a sponsored product. I mean product targeting. So I would do product. And then uh, this is the ASIN that I am advertising for, and I would put that here. Right. So that gives me a nice hierarchy of the naming and, and also the targeting types and also the product that I am advertising for. And then once I get to the ad group stage, I would uh, plunk in these two uh, targeting types under the ad groups. Budget, uh, I like, um, so I think in this case, I would like test 20 and then scale it up incrementally on a daily basis. So uh, let's begin with individual products, all right? Uh, so product, so this one here is gonna be product targeting and that is like also the name that I will so choose. And uh, also, uh, I will also choose the ad group name based on my uh, optimization settings. Yeah, so it seems like Okay, so in this case, I, um, I'm only gonna do uh, optimize for visits. So optimize, optimize for visits, uh, that is the campaign uh, targeting algo. So uh, the product I am trying to advertise for would be, would be this. Again, product targeting. So in a product targeting, um, again, you can choose categories, or individuals. So in this case, right, in this particular ad group, uh, I am just gonna go for um, individual products. So uh, I should like rename this to individual products. And uh, I'm also indicate that I am optimizing for visits. I added my product to advertise. And then now I decide like what products that I want to list. So what I like to do a lot of times uh, is that I would uh, look into my previous data, right? If you go to your um, Amazon um, reports, right? And if you've been running auto campaign, right? Uh, and also maybe like a product attribution, like product targeting campaign for a sponsored product. I think those are uh, a good source for you to pick from. But just for the sake of us, um, you know, just stepping through this campaign, uh, I, I'm going to, uh, in this case, just pick off uh, some products. I think for this product, uh, a good keyword uh, would be, so again, a good keyword that is uh, something that has attributed to a sale for you in the past. So um, this is obvious king, metal, bed. And a lot of times in uh, any type of ad groups, uh, you probably do not want to, you don't want to select anything that's over like 50, uh, at most 100, uh, because it's just like hard to manage, right? With like so many targets. So your product is 160 something dollars king red frame. So you'll look at the list and see, okay, what is uh, what products 
uh, is uh, for us is relatively competitive. So I would look at so okay the review. So I think a review count hundred something. So I think that's something that we can compete with. So I'll add that there. Uh, so this one I think we can compete with. So this one has like so many reviews, like nineteen hundred. So it's also like cheaper than ours, right? So I don't want to add it. This one I think there's a, a way to compete. This one, this one, very low number of reviews. So you get the idea. So you want to be somewhat selective, uh, but look at your competition levels, uh, see like yeah, which one you feel that you could. The customer would like definitely pick your product product over uh, others. And as you can see here, I'm using the suggested bid. So that's a number that uh, you could choose as well. Or what you could do is that you could use a custom bid, a very low bid, and then incrementally increase it. So with my software seller metrics, uh, you could like quite easily do that. Um, so just a shameless plug, I guess, um, you know, seller metrics. Uh, we are Amazon PPC software that allows you to make um, manual bid changes, number one, and number two uh, allows you to make, uh, allows uh, the system to make an automated uh, bid changes based on our smart algorithms. Right? And uh, what you could do with seller metrics is that you could, on a, daily basis, right? Or uh, even on a you know, weekly basis, you could just like upbid the related keywords uh, since the bid is so low that you set and then incrementally like upbid those keywords, right? And uh, for example, uh, you know, you have a set of keywords as low and then basically you could just increase the bid to a certain increase of a certain percentage. So enough of that. Uh, so I have 16 here and then I'm keeping, keep adding I think this thickness are slim, so I'm gonna put king bed frames. Let's see if I get more targets here. Okay, I think that that's more or less enough. Okay, so I think that is our uh, product. So this is what we created: uh, sponsor display, product targeting, individual products. There we go. Here is like the new uh, campaign right here. All right. Okay. So an, a great update for sponsor display is that you could create new ad groups within them now. So you don't have to uh, create a campaign for every single um, ad group. So you could kind of organize the different uh, advertising types that uh, sponsor display uh, is available for you to use now. So the next thing that you want to do is that it would be the category. So this one, um, you're going to create a campaign, call it category, and also the optimizational type. So this is optimizing for um, optimization for visits. And then the same product that I am trying to advertise for, that would be this. And then uh, product targeting. Okay, so for the category, so um, I always love to use uh, the similar to advertised product under categories. So that's what I would also suggest. And then the next is the category. So a lot of this category is already defined for you, right? So um, um, I think in my case, I would like want to um, go for categories that is more direct to my product. Uh, because uh, if you're advertising for a category, right? Your budget could go out of control, your, uh, you know, you could uh, be bidding for um, on listings that is like totally unrelated to your competition. So mattresses, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a substitute type of relationship. But um, in this case, let's just, you know, get laser focused in terms of what we want to add uh, to, uh, to the listings that we want to advertise on. So uh, let's go to, let's uh, you know, bed frame. So I also want to like further refine it. Uh, what I would love to see is that I would go for products. So there's a lot of products, sorry. So I love to go for products that has less uh, reviews than us. And uh, min part price, that is at least the price that we're selling or not too, uh, in terms of price, um, not too much of a difference, right? Like we're not looking for, um, so if we're selling like a $160 product, we probably don't want to advertise for like uh, on a product that is like 
less than 100. So in that case, I would say like 165. My product selling for 169. So it seems like uh, after doing that filter, there's still like 200 and something like products available. So you're going to add that and uh, it's going to give you a suggested bid because that's what we uh, select. Right, three dollars in this case. Again, my product is one hundred and seventy dollars, so three dollar bid is not um, out of the out of the realm of reasonability. The next one, uh, bed frame and bases, seems like a very relevant uh, type of category. Again, four stars, one hundred sixty five as my min, but it seems like in this case is only eight. Right, so in this case, I think I might increase. Even if I increased it, it's um, yeah, it's still like very low. So again, like use our own judgment here. Uh, I think uh, let me lower to okay. Uh, I mean, there's only 28 products, so even though like the even though it's the refinement is not as much as I want it to be, it's still like good enough. Uh, and it's only 28 products. Uh, the spending won't uh, completely go out of control. So in this case, uh, you could use uh, your own creative um, asset, or if you want, uh, you could just use the existing main listing. So let's just. Use, Let's just go uh, the easy route and use that existing main listing. Oh, another nice touch for you is that is to use your uh, coupon, right? Your 5%, I don't know, like your uh, coupon code, right? If you like do your, uh, so that's under uh, advertise and uh, coupon. And uh, every time uh, somebody search for your listing, you get like a kind of like a widget to kind of click the coupon. And this coupon uh, would show up on your sponsored display ad as well. That would say like uh, 5% off or something like that. So that's a, also a very nice touch for you to do if you so choose to uh, leverage that with sponsor display. So in this case, uh, I will create a new ad group based on this uh, optimization, uh, bid optimization type. So it hasn't really showed up yet. Uh, I think it probably takes time to propagate. Uh, so I think the next uh, step for you uh, would be if to, um, so right now we're only doing uh, optimize review right so what you can do is like optimize also for conversion for each of these ad groups as well test out which one does better for you and then use use the ones that are doing well for you and close down the optimization types that is not doing well for you right or if um, all of them are doing well for you then keep them all enabled so that's the uh, so basically amazon pps is all about trying new things and tests and sponsor display have like a lot of these new targeting features lately that really allows you to like test things out uh, and uh, probably get the best ROI. So I think with Amazon PPC, uh, that old saying goes, the early bird gets the worm. Uh, so if you're able to test a lot of these out early, you could probably, um, you know, uh, get better ROI than you're like later to the game. So definitely test these new uh, targeting types out. There we go. There it is. And uh, I do believe that if you use an audience targeting type, uh, for example, for reach. So like if you use choose audience uh, type, you could uh, you could uh, optimize for reach, which would be the cost is based on viewable impressions. So basically you're going to give like one cost or 1000 uh, impression. So the pricing is a little different than cost per click. But on the other hand, if you do uh, product targeting, uh, you I don't believe uh, in that case you can. Actually, I think you can. Yeah, but I think you have to set that up from the get go. Yeah, that seems like it. Optimize for reach. Yeah, somehow uh, when I set this up, uh, so I set this up for the existing campaign. Uh, can I click? Okay, uh, so it's not available. Okay, anyways, uh, that is a, still a pretty long video. Uh, so this is the setup for uh, sponsor display product targeting. Feel free to subscribe and be notified for our part two of this recording where I talk about how to set up a sponsor display uh, audience campaign up and a big best structure for you to scale. Uh, again, my name is Rick Wong, uh, founder of Seller Metrics. We are Amazon PPC software, which optimizes and uh, scale your Amazon PPC campaign, such as the campaign I just uh, set up in this video right here. So uh, best of luck, happy selling until the next video.